Do pathologists go to medical school? Also, so eine höhere Puls habe ich bei der Vorlesung in der Sensor. Hallo zusammen, mein Name ist äh, Yara Band. Ich bin Pathologin. And now we'll switch to English and uh, go through the questions. So, according to Google, how do pathologists distinguish between normal and cancer cells? That's potentially very easy because cancer cells don't look anything like normal tissue. But the better differentiator the cancer cells are, the more difficult it can become. And then we need a lot of expensive stainings, a lot of expensive additional data to be able to distinguish this. So it can be potentially a, a case of five seconds, it's cancer, and it could be potentially something where it takes us a week, maybe even more. So between easy and very difficult. Next question, how do pathologists diagnose cancer? Well, we start with a microscope. We still have microscopes. Um, we can do some digital pathology if we scan the slides, but at the moment it's on a glass slide, tissue section, looking in the microscope. And we try and differentiate and see, th is this something that we recognize as normal? If not, why not? And if it has hallmarks of cancer, so invasion, destructive growth, um, then we would start with a simple stain, a H&E stain, and then we do additional testing. So we need to know what type of cancer, where does it come from, is it a metastasis, um, to differentiate. So that's how we go about. And then that's sort of the first step, and if we can't get any further or we need additional um, information, we'll do molecular analyses as well. Okay, next question. How do pathologists determine time of death? We don't. Very simple. People tell us when the patient has died. So a pathologist is not forensic medicine, right? So in Switzerland, unlike in some other countries, we do not determine the cause. The cause of death is something we determine, but not the time of death. So we might have indications as to whether the patient died recently um, by looking obviously at the body from the outside and then underneath the microscope do we have signs of autolysis. But in a clinical setting, a clinical autopsy, the clinicians actually tell us when the patient died, and we hope those data are correct. And the one thing that we could say, though, for instance, is whether the patient was kept very long under the warm bed sheets, because maybe the relatives had to say goodbye, or whether the body was put in a, in a cool place, um, so we can see signs of autolysis. And we have certain ways of determining roughly when the patient might have died, but that's not our job. So our job is to say why the patient died. We'll leave the other question to the forensic pathologist. Okay, next question. How do pathologists determine the cause of death? Well, we look at the deceased. We rely obviously on the clinical information that we get from our clinical colleagues. So a, a history would be, would be nice. The more detailed, the better. So we always tell our clinical colleagues, garbage in, garbage out. So the better clinical information they give us, the better clinical information we give them in our pathology report. So how do we determine? We look at every single organ and we look at it macroscopically. So is it normal size? Is it normal color? Is it normal consistency? And then if we see abnormalities, we take samples for histology and then we look at it under the microscope. Is it normal? If not, what's not normal? Now there might be obvious causes of death like pericardial tamponade where the pericardial sac is filled with blood and then Everything else we see is sort of additional bonus information, but sometimes it takes a lot of nitty gritty detective work. And honestly, in a certain number of cases, we can't determine the exact cause of death. We might have a hypothesis, but there's some cases that remain open, unfortunately. Okay, next question. How do pathologists diagnose diseases? That's a difficult question, actually. I mean, it would seem like obvious because that's what we do all day. We diagnose disease. Um, I would say it depends on the type of disease. At the moment, our primary tool is still the microscope. So we take tissue sections or biopsies or cytological specimens and we first look at them under the microscope. And then 
that might be enough, as I already mentioned before, and then it depends on how the alterations are, whether they're very far away from normal or whether they're subtle, whether we need additional information in the form of immunohistochemical stains, uh, molecular, and sometimes we need the help from other colleagues, so we might have to call back to the clinician and know, know about additional information from the clinical side, like what is the serology of the patient. And then we, need, then we do a sort of integrative diagnosis where we sit with our clinical, uh, clinical colleagues, where we sit with the radiologist, whoever else is involved in the case, and then we sort of make a combined diagnosis. So it's not always us, sometimes we can do that, but sometimes we need, we need help. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, second last question. How do pathologists deal with smell? My work is not very smelly, actually. Uh, most of the time I sit in uh, my office. Well, as a more senior pathologist, I'll sit in my office and the diagnostic or the daily diagnostic work I do is looking at a glass slide underneath a microscope. I think the only smelly thing is my, in my office is maybe my wet shoes or uh, the coffee that's been there for a while. But I guess you, this is alluding to autopsy, right? And autopsy is not as important anymore. When I started 20 years ago, I was, my first year I did every day two, three autopsies, a whole year long. And now we have in Bern about 100 autopsies per year. So the smelly part of my work is, is restricted. I guess the assistants, our assistants have a bit more smell to deal with. So if you have colon cancer, the colon is re resected and the colon's not that clean, then you might have sort of olfactory uh, highlights. But um, formalin, okay, I guess formalin, yep, formalin to smell we sometimes have more or less, but we, we try and irrigate the, the specimens so they're put in water before we deal with them. So it's actually not that smelly. I guess my sister, who's a, uh, a surgeon, a visceral surgeon, she has more smell to deal with than I do. Okay, last question. How do pathologists distinguish between different species of bacteria? You know, thank God that's not our job. We leave that to the specialists. So I guess if you would Google this, and this comes from an American site, then an American pathologist would have to be able to answer that question because pathology in the United States actually comprises microbiology. That's sort of put together. In Switzerland, we have specialists in infectious diseases, microbiologists, they deal with bacteria. All I need to say is I see bacteria, or you know, even, even if I don't see bacteria, no problem. Somebody else can find those. So. Um, we have special stains. We look, of course, at the size. Are they rods? Are they more punctuate like? But in the end, um, that's not our job. So I sit back and relax. No problem. Somebody else can do that for me. So, next question. Ah, it continues. Wonderful. OK, next questions. Right. Do pathologists see patients? Yes and no. So I would say I see more patients than my clinical colleagues because every tissue section I look on a, under the microscope is a patient. It might be two micrometers thin and stained, but it's actually a patient. So I think, I think that's one of the most important things as a pathologist. We're not just looking at slides or cases. These are patients or parts of a patient we're looking at or the tumor of a patient. Um, do I see a live patient? Yes, as a cytopathologist here in Bern, I do. Uh, clinical diagnosis where in cytopathology we actually do FNAs of, of certain um, lesions of lymph nodes, of uh, periumbilical fat for certain diagnosis. So yes, I do see patients. It's not that many, obviously, but yeah, I do. And I enjoy that work, pathology. Do pathologists go to medical school? <laughs> of course. But you know, that's a good question. I actually got asked a couple of years ago whether I studied medicine, and I was shocked because the person asking me was a medical doctor, wasn't somebody who wasn't a, a, an MD. So obviously that person missed out on pathology. But yes, we do go to medical school. We're fully trained doctors. We're proper doctors. But I would say we are tissue doctors. So we know all about tissue and alterations in tissue that lead to disease. But I'm also a doctor, medical doctor. Do pathologists do surgery? Yes, we do surgery. Okay, not the conventional surgery. So 
We don't do surgery on uh, alive patients, but we have the possibility here in Bern to do microinvasive post-mortal diagnostics where with the help of visceral surgeons, we actually do laparoscopic uh, or laparoscopy where we can take biopsies, say the, 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 the um, next of kin don't agree to a conventional autopsy, then we can say, okay, we'll just do a liver biopsy because the question in which is important here is why did the patient die of his liver disease? So we can do that. So yes, it is surgery, but it's post-mortal. Do pathologists work on weekends? Yes, we have on calls. Um, I would say most pathologists who work in a smaller praxis, private praxis or smaller hospital probably won't work on weekends. Um, I don't sit in my office regularly on weekends unless I have to catch up with the work I didn't do on Friday. Um, but if I'm on call, then I can come in on weekends. So urgent cases which need to be seen on the weekend, patient that needs a therapy starting in the weekend, um, I do come in. Do pathologists work in hospitals? Yes. I spend a lot of time in the hospital. So obviously my daily business is sitting at the microscope but um, I go to visit my clin clinical colleagues several times a week when we have our tumor boards, where we discuss tumor patients. Um, I go in for, for certain fine needle aspirations where, or part of my team at least, where we actually go into the hospital and, and visit the patient to do the FNA um, at the hospital bed or in the, in the clinic. Um, so yeah, we're, we, we are connected with the, with the clinics. We're not just a we're not in a, in a locked up, far away, dark chamber, as most people might think. Do pathologists work with dead bodies? Yes. Um, as I mentioned, in our team, only part of us do, I do. Um, it's not a lot of my work. I'm not sure whether I'm sad about this or whether I just have to see that pathology has changed. Um, we have much more work which is related to tumor diagnostics which has become very very complicated lots of molecular work which is highly interesting so that takes me away from from working with with um, people who've passed away but yes it is still part of my work and it's it's highly interesting do pathologists make good money <laughs> good question um if i would work in a private practice i hope my Boss is not hearing this, he probably will see this, but I guess I could earn about double the amount I earn here. Um, do I have enough money to have a, a good life in, in Switzerland, which is expensive in itself? Yes, I absolutely do. I don't make money by private patients, right? So if you look at interventional um, clinical areas where the surgeon might make an extra bonus, so if he operates on a gallbladder and it's a private patient, he'll get an extra bonus. He might actually get that money himself, so he might make more money than I do. If I look at a, a biopsy of a private patient, it doesn't matter, I just get the amount that I get, so I don't get any benefit from that. So it's probably not as well paid as interventional clinical um, subject or cl clinical aspects, um, but yeah, I earn enough to make a good living, so that's not a reason not to do pathology. Cool. <lacht> Diese Folge wurde dir präsentiert von VSAO, MediService und Bibliothek Medizin.